Ladies and gentlemen, the NBA season is here and Joel Embiid and Paul George are not. Now, we knew that to be the case before the season fully kicked off. We got some updates on the situation as the Sixers are currently being investigated for their management of Joel Embiid's injury outlook. Now, we got this update from Sham Sharania stating that the NBA is likely to com commence an investigation into the Philadelphia 76ers surrounding the player participation of all NBA center Joel Embiid, sources tell ESPN. More to come on NBA today. Of course, Sham's doing his thing for ESPN now. Now, as far as this conversation as a whole, I do want to make sure we get the story straight that what exa exactly triggers this. Shout out to ESPN's Bobby Marks, who tweets out that, under the PPP, team physicians will continue to determine if a player is injured, but to promote com uh, compliance with the new policy, the league has a right to investigate, including an independent medical review to determine the player's availability. An automatic league off or an automatic league office investigation is triggered if the star player misses one or more games involving the below circumstances. Number one, star player misses a national TV or in-season tournament game, which was tonight. That is what triggered it. Of course, it's the debut. Of course, it was an ESPN game, and that is why this this investigation was officially triggered. But the other things that do pop up here is that multiple star teammates miss games or inconsistent statements consulting the player status now i'm up here recording at night after the game the Sixers are officially 0-1 not getting off on the right uh track here to pull up the box store before i dive, dive back into Joel Embiid situation that it was a 124 to 109 loss a lot of Tyrese Maxi ball of him trying to take the world on on his own and not quite being capable of that at this point in his career and really just not having enough help across the board. Now, I will say I'm overall encouraged by the ga that game. And my main takeaway for this is this can be a damn good basketball team when they are fully healthy and you add Joel Embiid and Paul George to this mix of the right role players that I do think they found this year. But I do want to make this video about the Joel Embiid situation specifically. So to dive deeper into that, I have a couple takeaways here. For starters, let's acknowledge how much Joel Embiid plays basketball. When you look at his career in his debut season, his rookie year after, I will provide the full context that Yes, he missed the full two seasons because of that foot injury. That was partially due to the injury, majority due to the injury. But really the factor being that that was in the priority of those were the prime, just absolutely tanking years of making sure you're getting a top draft pick. So there was not a rush to get Joel Embiid back on the court. If anything, I think it said way more about the organization than it did about Joel Embiid's availability, which I think is kind of a conversation that we can have throughout his career. But nonetheless, when he did step on the court for the first time in 2016-17, he played 31 games. The following year, 63 games, then 64 games, 51 games in back-to-back -back years, which I will mention the one being a shortened season here where they just played 72, I believe is the number. So not as bad of a miss as it officially looks here. Then he played 60, uh, 68 games in the 21-22 season, 66 games in the 22-23 season. Those years, him both qualifying for those postseason awards in that MVP race there. And then last season, just 39 games as the meniscus tear really did some damage there. I brought up those numbers to say, I think Joel Embiid plays more basketball than the general perception of him is. That No, that's not perfect. No, you're not a guy in Iron Man that's there for all 82 games. That's never going to be Joel Embiid. But I do think in most people's heads that he plays a little bit less than that. When you think about the modern ecosystem of the NBA, the Stars miss a lot of games. That is just the reality. We live in a load management era. You can argue about if it's the right philosophy. You can argue if it's right for the sport of basketball, if it's good for the game, growing the sport, all these things. But the bottom line is that's just exactly what's going on over here. Now, what's weird to this situation? situation about me is the concept of how the Sixers are managing things. So this is what we know from what has been portrayed to us to the Sixers. No, Joel Embiid has not been re-injured. No, this is not a direct injury that Joel Embiid is dealing with. He's completely fine. There was nothing that was stirred up at the Olympics, anything like that. But what we also know is he just missed game one of the season is not expected to be available Friday or for game three. So what's the deal here? Now, I want to approach this with a couple different angles. Let me start by getting the exact uh, quotes here and pull up this. That we do have Embiid that told ESPN that he would, quote, probably never play back-to-backs for the rest of his career to ensure he's healthy for the playoffs. I think everyone was on board and okay with that plan. I think the plan that people were unaware was the plan was for him to miss opening night. And I'm more sympathetic than most to the Joel Embiid load management situation. I wholeheartedly believe that is the right route to giving him the best chance of having a playoff run. Joel Embiid is a diff should be held to a different standard than just about your average athlete. This is a guy that I think has legitimate degenerative knee issues, and all you're hoping for from a Sixers perspective is that one healthy playoff run. That is what all this is about. Is it unfortunate? Yes. Is it an ideal situation? Absolutely not. 
But my pushback and what I will always argue is there's just no way to upgrade and get a top-end talent as great as this guy when he's playing at his peak. And guess what? When he's on the court, he's dominant. That This is not a situation where he doesn't look the same or doesn't look like himself while he's out there. Even that Knicks series in which he's battling with one knee, with half a face, with Bell's palsy drooping all the way across there. This guy still was the best player in that series by a country mile, Jalen Brunson included. When you think about what he did, his defensive impact, the 50-point game that he did have, he did it all for this team, and I know it did not work. They obviously lost the series there. I don't put that on Joel Embiid. Last year's playoffs as a whole increased my my belief that Joel Embiid can lead this to a team to a championship while decreasing my belief that physically he has it in him. And while I understand that is a difficult balance to match, that is why you bring in the Andre Drummonds of the world who are capable in starting a game while Joel Embiid heals up and figures his thing out. I thought Andre was just fine tonight. I do not think the loss was on him overall. Now, the funniest part about this to me as a whole is just the fact that it's being investigated. Now, we've seen the Sixers be investigated for countless different things at this point in time. It is not an NBA season until the league office dives into it. So here's my pitch. If I'm the NBA, I'm diving in there. I'm saying, what's wrong with Joel Embiid? Is he not truly healthy? What should go down here? And here's what I think the NBA needs to do. We got to suspend Joel Embiid, man. We need to make an example of this. We need to make sure that this load management is not accountable. And you know what? Why don't we suspend him for the entirety of the regular season? Let's make sure this guy cannot step foot on the floor again because of the disrespect that the Sixers are causing to our great NBA league. That's what I want the front office to do, to come down, show this no-good Sixers franchise that you can't be manipulating these injury reports and making sure that you have your best player's interest in mind. That is not good enough for us. That's what I want to see from our NBA. For what it's worth, let's suspend Joel Embiid for the length of the entire regular season and make sure that he's healthy for the playoffs because we cannot put up with this. This manipulation, the injury report, this making sure this guy's not suiting up. No, it's absolutely ridiculous that we're even having this conversation. And I understand the NBA. I understand their goal here. At the end of the day, they want their best players to play. They want their best product on the floor. But what I think gets lost a little bit in translation here is the goals of each person and each organization in this are a little bit different. For the Sixers as a whole, the bottom line comes down to money. Josh Harris is counting those ticket sales. He obviously wants Joel Embiid on the floor as well. For Joel Embiid, maybe not quite the same goal. That he's made it crystal clear to everyone that will listen this entire offseason that his goal is to be healthy for the playoffs. Does playing a game in October, the opening game of the season, help him reach that goal? No, it absolutely does not. And by the way... It's incredibly frustrating to me that these same people that are criticizing Joel Embiid for missing the opener are these same people that are arguing, wake me up when the playoff starts or nothing matters until the postseason. You cannot have it both ways in this conversation. Now, for this situation as a whole, I have two separate opinions here. My one opinion is the Sixers have every right to rest Joel Embiid as much as they physically want to. If they do not want to play him a single game in the regular season, I believe they have that right. Now, is that the best thing from a fan experience? Is that the right move for Joel Embiid? Those are separate conversations as well. And by the way, that should not happen. That we should see Joel Embiid on the floor, absolutely. It would be wrong not to build up some chemistry with this roster to make sure that he's in playoff shape when we get to there. Those are important things that need to happen. But the other part of this conversation is is the Sixers' lack of transparency. And this has really been the calling card and the frustrating point throughout the Joel Embiid era, that constantly it's, we're there, we're an hour before game time waiting, Joel Embiid's going to warm up, and then we're going to decide if he's going to play. Or he's 50-50 a half hour before tip-off, we're really trying to figure things out here, if he's good to go or not. That's the stuff that needs to stop. Even opening night, the fact that it happened two days before, how is this the plan? If he's not ramped up, how is that not understood? That this opening night was scheduled months ago. Everyone knew this. The Sixers knew this. This has been on the calendar. This is not something that just popped up in front of you. So what I want from the Sixers right now is lay it out there, man. Empty all the skeletons out of the closet. Let the plan be known. Be a little bit more forward-facing and public. And while I admire and appreciate you being a little more proactive in the management of Joel Embiid, you got to get everyone on board and let people in on what the situation is. Because right now it's a mess and nobody looks good. Joel Embiid included, Daryl Morey included. And I especially, to be honest, feel bad for Nick Nurse, who is the guy who has to face the music on this. I tried to pull up the interview clip between him and Kyle Newbeck, who was asking directly these same questions about why doesn't this add up of, you guys are saying this is all according to plan, he's on schedule, on track, yet he can't play in the season opener what's the deal there and Nick Nurse basically with a I don't know what to tell you this is the plan we need to see a little bit more from him yes he's lost weight yes he's not hurt all these type of things but yeah he's not gonna be playing in the opener 
For Nick Nurse specifically, I think in all reality, this is far from his decision. That This is well above his head. This is something that if he had any say in, Joel's probably playing in night one, but it's not his decision to make. So I feel a little bit bad that he's the guy that has to face the music there. I do want to hear from Joel Embiid himself. I do want to hear from Daryl Morey himself. I don't think anything actually comes out of this investigation as a whole. I think this is probably something that we just kind of look past. Maybe there's a slap on the wrist. Fine. I don't see anything truly coming of it because I don't believe the NBA can overall overstep and give that decision to to make it that punishable i understand cracking down on load management but i just think joel Embiid is a much different case than most of the players that we talk about in this context these are real deal on the issues that aren't going away anytime soon and management is the best route from here so the nba season has officially started now that the Sixers are being investigated i do want to hear from you guys your thoughts on my kind of breakdown here i understand i have kind of a bit of a polarizing take on this which i'm kind of surprised to be the case but i fought with quite a few people about this already shout out to all my co-hosts that love chopping it up and, and arguing in every setting possible for me so let me know what you guys think in the comments i do feel like i don't see eye to eye with everybody on this which is totally fine everybody's more than welcome to have their opinion and i think that's why the world works that way but let me know what you guys think on the joel Embiid conversation as a whole once again i will reinforce that this is about getting him to a healthy playoffs. And if that means ruffling a few NBA front office feathers on the route to doing that, then so be it. I think we fast forward a month or two from now, people are going to forget that he didn't play the season opener. I think if we flash forward to the playoffs, people are going to forget how many games he played in the regular season and if it matters. And if you end up getting that NBA championship, then you can rub that in everyone's faces forever. So we'll see how things shake out from here. But for the time being, we have to wait to see what the Sixers team fully looks like because it's not going to look like itself until Joel Embiid and Paul George are on that floor right now. But let it rip in the comments, guys. I do want to hear from you guys your thoughts on the Joel Embiid as a whole. I understand the frustrations. It isn't ideal by any means, but I still understand where a lot of the front officer for the Sixers specifically are coming from here. So let me know if you're on the same page as me. Anything else you got, make sure you're smashing that subscribe button if you have not already. Dropping a like on this video and anything else you got on your mind. I'll be talking to you next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.